Hello, my name is John Griffiths. I am a, uh, a lay reader, um, or lay minister, as it is uh, now coming to be called, in the Diocese of St Albans, and uh, was licensed uh, to do that uh, role two years ago. Um, I'm uh, In this film, I just want to um, share some resources that I use when preparing uh, sermons uh, to see, uh, in just in case it's helpful. So, uh, without further ado, let me plough on to share some of these with you. The first one I want to show is actually one I don't use. Uh, this is Sermon Central, quite a good example of, of one of those sites which have literally uh, tens of thousands of sermons on them. I know some preachers use them either to check what, they've, uh, what they're going to be preaching on before they even get started, or sometimes people do it almost to get a second opinion at the end. Um, I tend not to do that, um, simply because uh, for me the internet is not a kind of gigantic reference library for that kind of checking, but much more uh, a place to go and get resources and get inspiration. So um, I, I, t I just don't use it, but uh, it wouldn't be appropriate to simply talk about uh, sermons and preparing sermons if you weren't aware that there are actually lots of sermons online if that's what you want to go and look and compare with. Uh, moving on to the next one which is Bible Gateway. Uh, this is a great site which I use almost every time. Uh, Bible Gateway allows you to search for any passage in the Bible uh, using most of the English translations available and then you can copy and paste them either into the text of what you're writing um, or if you're using something like PowerPoint to be able to drop that in. So that's really useful, particularly if you want to be able to compare between different translations and it's very straightforward to use. So, uh, on from Bible Gateway to another um, uh, resource. Uh, this is the Church of England's um, uh, liturgy website, um, and uh, you just have to search for that um, within uh, Church of England Worship Liturgy, and there it is. It's useful because um, if you ever need to refer to that, instead of having to copy and paste it, um, or, sorry, in having to type it out, uh, you can just copy and paste it from this website. So I know technically one isn't normally inc including liturgy and sermons, but sometimes if you ever need to do that, this is the easiest way of doing it, so I recommend that. Moving on from that to Flickr. This is if you are using um, a resource like PowerPoint and wanting to show pictures in some way or other. Now Flickr is one of the most, um, one of the biggest online databases of photos. The reason why it's so useful is because it's the one which uh, professional and um, uh, amateur uh, photographers who are taking their photography extremely seriously tend to put their photos on. Now it isn't the only way of getting hold of photos, I often will just search um, using Google. But the reason why I like Flickr is that because of the extra quality, because of the professionals involved, um, it, you do get much better images there. The danger with it is that you have um, very high resolution images there and um, uh, maybe in another film I'll, I'll talk about how you can reduce the size of these so you don't end up with massive slideshows and presentations uh, which um, make everything run slowly or even make your computer crash. Um, but for now, it's just worth remembering, if you want the quality, Flick is good, but make sure you don't end up with files that are too big. Um, so uh, Flickr um, is so big um, that there are various resources which are connected with it, which I also want to mention. As a way of being able to scan very quickly, I recommend Tag Galaxy. Now this is a German website, so you'll search for it with a .de, taggalaxy.de as its suffix. Um, and it's a, a wonderful visual metaphor for how you find uh, photos on Flickr. Um, what it allows you to do is basically to search by keywords, and they appear as planets and, and satellites of planets, or suns as the, your core keyword, and with the other tag words that you can choose um, as satellites. And that's really good fun to, to play with. But once you have chosen the actual keywords you want to use for the images you're looking for, then suddenly you get this wonderful um, uh, impression as the, as the core uh, sun or star becomes populated with photos. There is also a counter there which shows you how many photos are available. And once you've got all these photos, which are laid onto this planet, you can then roll the planet around and zoom in and out and go and find the image you want. And normally that allows you to, when you double click on a picture, it takes you straight into Flickr and off you go to see if you can get it. So Tag Galaxy is fantastic. There's another one I wanted to mention called Spell with Flickr. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you want to spell something out and you're bored with using the standard um, uh, typing, uh, sort of typefaces, this um, uh, tool, Spell with Flickr, allows you 
to make, put together a word where the letters have come from all sorts of different Flickr images. And if you don't like one of the ones, or once you've typed it in, you can just click on it and it'll come up with something else randomly. It'll generate a letter from another image. So it's a great way of sort of using graphics in quite a creative and a different way. So that's something I will use from time to time. Okay, so that was uh, looking at Flickr as a resource. Now I've got something else for you, which is a little bit different. It's called Wordle. Now what Wordle does is to take a whole lot of text and to turn it into a kind of um, graphic. And the way in which it deals with the pictures is to take the, the frequency, the, the, the words which are um, used frequently in this piece of text, and they appear larger, and those words which may only appear once um, uh, will be relatively small. And so it's a way of looking at uh, an entire piece of text to see which words are important. And this sort of technique is used in things like word clouds um, on various websites, and you may be familiar with that. Well, Wordle allows you to do this with any piece of text. And so what I wanted to show you is what I've done. Um, uh, on a number of occasions uh, where I literally feed the text of a sermon into it. So this is Wordle, which you can search for. And then moving on from that, um, here's one which uh, was done for John 17. I was preaching on John 17. Now, given the amount of repetition in a chapter like that, it's kind of useful to be able to see whether the sermon that I wrote raised, uh, related to it, um, it has anything like the same ratios of, of me and you and all of that. So um, that's a Wordle for John 17. For the John's uh, account of the resurrection, you can see how um, my sermon again has been put through that. We could, of course, have put the passage through that and, so, and seen how that actually came out. But this is, this is a sermon that I wrote um, based on, on John 20. And a final one, where well, you may be dealing with a topic which is relatively uh, abstract. Uh, this was from a sermon on uh, Jesus and his role as our substitute from Romans. Um, this is how Wordle um, uh, handled it. Now what is quite interesting with this is that you can see there are different designs. You can lay it out in slightly different ways. So once you've um, got the Wordle working, you can then make minor changes to it um, to make it look nicer or make it fit on a, a page a bit more easily. But uh, have a look at it because it's, it's quite interesting. Then moving on from that, um, let's look at film. And that's just going to be the last topic that I, I cover in this particular um, uh, short film. Um, I'll start off with Sermon Spice, which is one of these resources in the, from the United States which, um, where you can go and buy films as downloads. And I have on occasion um, got things from there. The issue with film is that it normally for film to be effective, it needs to be very much related to um, our own lives, our own culture. And a lot of this does come across to me as quite American. So I'm not sure how well it travels across to the UK. But if you're interested in that, Sermon Spice, there it is. Um, but therefore, as an alternative, I'd suggest that possibly you use a much more um, broad resource, which is also free, like YouTube or Google Video or Vimeo. So turning to YouTube. If you haven't heard of YouTube, what well, it is the main resource for film. It's growing at a huge rate, something like 24 hours of film is being uploaded every single minute. So it's changing and growing all the time, and it's one of the main places where people place film footage. Um, now, um, if you find a film that you want to use, um, one of the problems that people have that, that, that inhibits them using them is that uh, you don't really want to be trying to play one live in case you have a dodgy broadband connection or it freezes or something goes wrong. So if I am using film, my way of dealing with it is to go to Zamzar. And Zamzar is a tool which allows you to be able to choose the film that you want to watch and then to um, choose a format for it to be converted to. And that could be um, something like a, um, a real um, audio movie or it could be a dot movie, a, a dot MOV, which is the Apple format, QuickTime, or it could be um, a WMA, a, uh, a Windows one. It doesn't really matter because all the uh, video, the, the Windows... Uh, the internet uh, readers tend to play these formats. Um, but what Zamzar allows you to do once you've um, uh, chosen your video, once you've chosen the uh, format you want it to save it to, you send in your email address, and then once it's compiled the thing, it then tells you where you can download it from, and it'll then download it straight onto your hard drive, ready for you to play straight back from a laptop in, in the, in, you know, when you're preaching a sermon. So Zamzar is a really, really useful tool, and if I was um, using a video clip for any reason and needed to get it from online, that would be the way in which I'd do it. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this film, learned a few things about resources that one can use for sermons. Um, I'm going to come back and maybe do a couple of others, looking at PowerPoint in particular, and how one can use PowerPoint images within sermons as well.
Thanks for listening and watching. Bye.